Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Yeah, Walter, did you? was there something you wanted to add to this while uh, we're waiting on Kevin? No, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I I, I went to the, the FARC. Fark, it's Fark, right? Fark. Yeah, yeah Fark, I said it. No, Frack. Now you're saying Frack, Fark, Frack, too. Frack, 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 yeah, let's yeah. not get Frack. this twisted. I just, I just didn't. I went to the, I went to their thing and I looked at the stuff. I didn't. I maybe it hasn't happened yet, but I didn't see any way that you. Uh, I think it's very it. new. It's very, very, very new. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll try to get Lola to put a link for Lola. Can you put a link for Frack in the description of the video, please? Um, and if you guys, well, I, some, I of, the, some of the guys how, listening out there, can, I think I, it's, it's frackaction.org. Sorry, Walter, what? Right, yeah, how you, how you get in, how you join, or I guess it's not up there yet or something. No, or... This is all very new, um, yeah. you know, so I think we need a little bit of patience about this. And it's probably, you know, there's a lot of things happening with these guys. So, um, you know, we'll, I'll definitely spend time getting back to you guys about frack and, and talking about it in the future and all that kind of stuff. I think we all need to do whatever our part is, right? So someone like me, I need to do my part this, get get that yeah. kind of stuff out to you guys. We need folks to, you know, put some money into that. Uh, we need the industry to get behind it and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And all of us to pull together and use our resources um, to, to make this a useful tool for everyone that's out there. Go ahead, Walt. No, well, yeah, yeah, I, I, it's it's kind of sad that the, uh, the the big gun companies that have been selling these brace equipped guns for years and years and years aren't active or involved. Like I guess they figure that somebody else is going to fire the. I mean, some of them are scared of their shadow, to be quite mm -hmm. honest, with you to make a stance in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, they they never have, you know. They're like, oh well, oh, I'm scared. Somebody might think bad of me. Oh, oh, it's like you know. Yeah. Oh. Well, what do you got? I mean, in reality, it's this little bitty fraction of of that that make the mo most noise. Um, but yeah, I mean, and if they got out there and got out in the forefront of it, and then and actually, you know, promoted it to their customers, then their customers would get involved. Because a lot of people don't even know this is going on. To be honest with you, yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't pay attention to all this stuff. And you would think they're everybody's uh, following all this stuff on the internet, but they're really they're really looking at the girl on the motorcycle and they're looking at the, they're, they're 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 looking at the guy blowing stuff up with the gun they're not looking at the political stuff you know you heard people say this hank well i don't like politics i don't like politics you know and it's like you better like it if you're a gun guy you better get involved you better, yeah, you better, you better wake the hell up you know yeah. i mean yeah go ahead kevin no i was gonna say i, I agree and disagree with that i think mm -hmm. my opinion in my experience with business is you probably have a lot of big companies who you have legal counsel and you have compliance telling them to stay quiet. Mm -hmm. And that's great for the short term, but if we want to retain our rights and you want to stay in business, um, you know, you got to put up a fight and you got to make a stand. Like for me personally, I probably have between the company and personally 15 attorneys and okay. I spent millions of dollars in attorneys and I have great attorneys and I listen to them, but their job is to advise me. My job is to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And if you run a big gun company and you're letting the attorney <clears throat> or anyone else, compliance, HR, make your decisions for you, you're doing it wrong. And I think it's very common. My experience with Remington and SIG, I, I, I saw that bleed into places it shouldn't bleed into. You know, the executive staff when I started at SIG was six people. And when I left, it was probably 25, 26 people. And that became what it was. You know, you got HR, you got compliance, and you got your attorneys making your decisions for you. The company just can't be successful and make good decisions doing that. And I hate that. Yeah, it can't. Uh, it's difficult when something's uh, basically running by committee. Um, you, yeah, your story. I've always wanted to talk to talk to you about all this stuff, Kevin. I, this is not a good time. Yeah, maybe... <laughs> Maybe in the future we'll, uh, you know, we'll have you back on here, you know, if you, if you don't think we're too horrible and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get some of the background. Because, um, you know, you're like, I heard about you at first with just people talking about, man, this guy's, you know, it's amazing what happened. It was at this company and went to this company. Everywhere it goes, everything's awesome. 
you know, but I know I know it's deeper and more than that. So uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, deal with is I know that when you you were saying that we were talking about this uh, the other day here on the podcast, and I think we said some we uh, we we said some wrong things that maybe we wanted to address. Uh, you know, what what was that? What were your uh, issues? Well, I, I heard some of the stuff, and mm. I, I think the things that either Walter thought uh, that Walter thought or he he heard mm. um, that we had advertised, you know, the, the arm brace as a loophole, mm. and that we did it as a stock, and you know, we've never posted anyone. Uh, holding the arm brace to the shoulder, firing the gun. We don't market it that way. We build tons of SBRs. You know, our business is really split. Mm -hmm. Unlike companies that build arm brace guns where they only build arm brace guns. They don't build SBRs. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always been involved in NFA in class three and my business has always been, um, you know, around that. Um, And I think we waited until we did an arm braced gun And, and our, uh, Honey Badger pistol is a pistol. That's what we design it to be. That's what we market it to be. Um, you know, and, and there's things too, like look up the definition of stock on the ATF website, what a stock is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and they can say, oh, well, your your arm brace is viewed as a stock. Well, by ATF's own definition on their website, and I, they have a 1911 pistol, and the pistol grip itself, they um, the technical definition of that is a stock. You know, so we're conscientious about this. Uh, we, we weren't, you know, one of the, the, the first to subscribe to the arm brace. You know, we didn't do it the first year. We were in business at uh, Q. We didn't do it until later in 2017. And, and when I was an executive at SIG, we'd been doing the arm brace since 2012 or 13. Um, so that was just my issue with the first episode and some of the things that were said. Okay. I. I I, re- I saw I read that somewhere, that's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't remember where it was, but I I read that someplace, and I was like, well, I I, I know myself if I w- if I was making a complete uh, uh, firearm with the brace, I wouldn't advertise it as such, you know, not to use it as a brace because, to me, you're kind of poking the bear. I, I agree with that, but you know, I also read an article today. Uh, well, an article. I, I there was an article posted about me today, and there were several comments saying I was a felon, and I couldn't possess firearms. Oh wow! Oh god! Yeah, you know, I, it's got to be tough to be in your position, Kev. I know, Kevin. Excuse me, I don't want to call you Kev. I, I call someone else this, and their name's Kevin, Kev, all the time. So my apologies. Come uh, on, man. I, yeah, I, you know the nature of what we're doing here is a podcast, and there's so much news and all that kind of stuff. Uh, going through and we're just giving our opinions of everything and you know the thing about opinions uh, it's just like everyone has them we, we could definitely yeah. be that <laughs> you know we could definitely say the wrong thing what I try to do is like own up to to what it is try to correct it you know when we know stuff is correct and uh, you know if I, I understand from your point of view how it's tough when you're like getting hit from all sides and everyone's just got opinions on what's happening with you yeah, no, and you have that reputation, and, and so I respect you for that. Mm-hmm. You know, me as a man who makes mistakes every day, you know, I make more mistakes probably than I make correct decisions, and that's just mm-hmm. part of life. Like, mm-hmm. we're growing, learning, it's okay, mm-hmm. um, but when you're faced with, with the facts, then, you know, then that shows what you are, and, mm-hmm. and I always reserve the right to correct my beliefs or my statements because I learn every day. That's part of me being probably like Walter too, into innovation. We want to change things. We want to improve things. We want to build things. Mm-hmm. I love far more than I love anything else in the industry. My passion is innovation and product innovation. That's what I love. Mm-hmm. And I love marketing. And I'm probably good at both of those things. Everything else I'm not great at. And I make mistakes all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's okay. But I also take it you know, I mean, I also realized for whatever reason, people are polarized by part of my life or business and my mm. personal life. And I take a lot of criticism and a lot of cheap shots. You know, I have a lot of the anonymous people on Instagram and social media message my children and say stuff. Oh, that's man. that's pathetic. Yeah, that's uh, way across the line. Yeah, and my, my kids now are, you know, I've been a single dad most of their lives, and I've raised them, and, 
and they're all a year apart, and they're all in, getting in their mid and late teens now, and they all get it, and they don't care. Um, but it's pathetic. Mm-hmm. Um, but, y- y- you know, I take issue with people that do things anonymously, and I don't like, even within our industry, other gun companies, when they uh, spend a lot of money on marketing rather than engineering or innovation and they claim things that aren't correct about their products that bothers me and the reason it bothers me is because i put tons of effort into that because i want to give our consumer the best possible experience Mm -hmm. and when someone just lies and markets and spends marketing dollars and the products aren't really what they say i take i take issue with that Mm -hmm. not call them yeah you know sometimes wrong about that and that's okay Mm -hmm. um but you know, Listen, it's, it's, and, I, and I think it's even worse than that. One, I think it's terrible that someone would go after your kids, um, you know. But yes, people. I don't know what is the need that uh, people feel that they have to get to you through someone else, right? I think I've seen the same thing happen to me and Lola. People who want to go after Lola, uh, you know, to hurt my feelings, um, and and I get it. I just don't think it's a very manly or human thing to do. You want to get at me? No. Get at me, you know. Um, Sad. You know, I get yeah. called an ass or whatever all the time, and I speak my mind. Mm-hmm. But, um, it's it's not generally who I am in my personal life, but people who would post something anonymously or message children, mm-hmm. people that I would respect in my personal life. So I would be with them because I'll call you out or I'll slap you in the face. You say something like that to me mm-hmm. in front of me. Yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I, I grew I, up like that too. Like you, you have to be careful what you say to people because you will meet them. <laughs> Yeah, you will meet them in the real world. But I notice there's a like we were talking about people in the industry. I I notice there's a lot of those same people that they meet you in the real world. They can't even make eye contact. No, it, it's a lot of that. Yeah. Like I was yeah. raised by a single mom who was very strong and beat the shit out of me until the day I moved out of the house. She did not take crap from me and my brother. Mm-hmm. And I think I was raised that way. And I related a lot to a Mike Tyson quote lately or recently that became like a meme and it went a little viral and it's a picture of him and it says people on the internet have gotten way too used to being able to run their mouths and not get punched in the face for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, but I'm in a good situation. You know, I raise my kids. They know who I am. They know that I get a lot of this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's fine. If that's who I got to be in the industry, like, I don't care. I didn't get in this industry to make friends or win a popularity contest. I got in the industry because I was passionate about it and I love product innovation and I want to produce the best stuff and I want to leave the world and my little niche of the world, which is the small arms industry, a little Mm -hmm. better than I found it. And I don't think I'm anything special. I think I try really hard and I devote a lot of resource and I sacrifice a lot of my personal life, um, everything I have to do it. And I think anybody could do it if they committed like I did. So I don't think I'm special in that regard. I think I'm special because... I'm okay with being uncomfortable, and I'm okay with risk, and I'm willing to to submit everything I have to this passion of my life. And I found people in my life, whether it's my woman, my children, they accept it. It's who I am. It's it's how I'm driven. You know, and outside of that, I'm just like everybody else. Like, I'm a father. You know, I'm a partner to someone. Um, you know, I'm a boss. Uh, you know, son to someone. And I answer to people, you know, I own 70% of my company, 30% is owned by investors and we have a board and I'm chairman of the board and I have all voting rights, but I respect them individually or I wouldn't have let them in. And I answer to them when they ask me questions. So, yeah. yeah. And I think one of the things you'll find too, and I, and I know Walter can, uh, can, uh, can see eye to eye with this. There's also people in the industry that do things subliminally or behind your back, okay. backstabbing, whatever you want to say to you. Yeah. 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 Right, Walt, you know about some of that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. You yeah. Had a taste Bless of that, that, uh, <laughs> that knife. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.